me there. They don't like my accent. They don't like my color. Shut up. It's all of us. They don't. But yet we have to show up there and do it anyway because that is life. I really appreciate you sharing that because you need to be able to be, even though you may be hurting, to help somebody because your own game day is coming. And when your own game day comes, you need somebody to cheer you on too. Amen. I have a question. Some questions came in here. How do you handle criticism from some people and sometimes from your f from fans, especially uh, when you don't win a game? How do you handle that? Because life also, we have people that criticize us. Any one of you? Um, it, it's about what lie, what lie you're going to entertain, because let alone you deal with negative thoughts. Uh, from, from, from the enemy, your enemy, you deal with a lot of negative thoughts. So, I mean, it's really what lie you want to entertain. If it's not coming from the Lord, it's a lie. So, you just have to filter your thoughts, renew your mind constantly. Wow. So, Kevin, go ahead. Um, I think when, when with dealing with negativity, um, uh, like Drake was saying, you have to learn how to channel um, your own thoughts. Um, sometimes people will say something, and, and when you're in a place of negativity yourself, you start to believe those things. Um, and sometimes when you're in a place in your life to where um, you care so much about what people say, that that can take a true hold over your life and, and until you can know who you are. Um, until you can know who you are in Christ and to know what he's already said about you, anything else everybody else says doesn't even matter. That's true. That's true. Jeff, you want to add to that? How do you handle that? Yeah, um, the biggest thing, like Drake said, uh, you got to see where that criticism com is coming from. You want to see if it's constructive criticism or if it's uh, somebody that's uh, destructive. Yeah, destructive criticism. And, if it's constructive criticism, yeah, take it. Find out what you need to learn from it. But if it's not, then toss it aside. It's not for you. It's, it's, it's there to destroy you, not to build you up. That's true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question says, uh, any, and anyone of you, all of you can answer this. Say, as a team player, how do you or how will you handle, how will you handle it when your team member is not playing their part at the expense of the whole team? Uh, and trying to increase your workload. So maybe they are not playing their part uh, and everything like that. How, would, how do you handle that? How do you carry extra load when somebody is not putting their weight? Uh, you let it be known that you're here to help them and not hurt them. So just let them know you, you're holding them accountable and uh, they should do that in return. And if they don't um, take what, what, what you're giving them, the coaches, they'll, they'll find the next best person. Thank you for sharing that. Let me move to the next question, and I think this will go for, I think, Kevin and Jeff. Considering you've played for NFL, or uh, one of you played for NFL, how did you handle moving to a less popular league like CFL? And the question is, didn't you feel like God had let you down? I think we can all uh, answer those questions because we, we all spend time in NFL. Go ahead, please. Every one of you. Um, I think for me, um, so I, I got to a place in, in my last um, spending time with the Steelers of, of, of the confidence that God had given me um, to play, um, of the courage and, and of the boldness that he had instilled in me to um, show that I was a man of God and I was trying to do what I can and I wasn't going to allow um, the business itself get to me because um, I, I did that the previous year um, of, of just playing and stuff but um, approaching it differently I, I allowed myself to fully be surrendered to God and allow him to use me um, and then once he got me to a place where I just felt like I was just the most confident of, in my abilities and in where I was in my life I got released um, and it hurt a little bit. Um, it, it was a thing to where I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I was extremely frustrated and I just couldn't understand it and I still don't understand it. Um, but I knew in it all, um, I, I had to continue to have the faith. Um, I got the word faith tattooed on me only because of, that was one thing that I've 
continuously been learning um, to depend on in my life through my journey um, to know that just because you, you don't get an opportunity, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's a, a definite no. Um, sometimes that just means that God definitely has something in store better for you, and, and that was the CFL. Um, so I'm definitely appreciative of it. Um, and it, it was a, a crazy transition, but when I, when you walk in the fullness of God and you, when you walk with him and you continue just to trust in him, what he brings you to is, is what you have to um, consider it all joy. Um, no matter whatever it is, it says it in James 1, 2 through 4. Uh, it says, I count it all as joy, my, my brothers. Um, the testing of your trials produces endurance. So you have to have that endurance and everything. Um, no matter what it is, what you're going through, just to, just to stay encouraged through it all, honestly. So that's oh, Thank me. you for sharing. Oh. <clears throat> uh, just, just to go along with that is... Uh, my testimony, I, I was All-American in, in college. I mean, All-American in college, I was also a, a third-round draft pick. So you're looking at it, you're young, you're, uh, you have a, a, a bunch of money, and you think that you won't be that guy to be released. You will have a 10-year a, a career. You will have all the things, all the greatness and attributes that the sport has to offer. And when I got released three times, it was an eye opener. But I knew that I had faith in the word and I knew that he was doing it for a reason. So 2014 was the year that I was removed from football. No teams called, no workouts. But uh, I just contend for the faith. I kept going to church, kept going to Bible studies. And, and that year I was able to see my wife and uh, that's wow, wow. That's 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 one of the biggest life investments you can have. That's uh, true. That's true. So I mean, during that year, even though I was out the NFL, I had time to be able to see who he had planned for me. Uh, and that's true. That's huge. So, I mean, I, I thank God for that. But also, uh, I, I, I don't feel like he let me down. Um, every person who I come in contact with is, is for a reason. Uh, the previous team I was with, I mean, guys really didn't have that, that Christ conscious like I wanted them to see it. So I was able to mentor a lot of people to just stay focused. And no matter what happened, you win. Just... Uh, Take your legal rights in Christ. All the promises that he has for you is not a lie. And uh, that's, that's, that's my mission, just to help people to contend for the faith and know that as long as we walk by faith, not by sight, what's for you is for you. And you're always going to win. So it's, it's, uh, it's just been a blessing because the... Since, I, since I've been in, in the CFL going on year three, um, every day, every step has been a walk of faith because it, it is some things you, personally you, you want, but we have to tell, take self out of the equation and put factor in God's will. If we take self out of the equation, the disappointments in life, it won't be an issue because we know that if it's in our life, God has a reason. He has a purpose for it. So it's always something, no matter how hard the situation is, that we can just take it and just, I thank you, Lord, for this test because you are putting me through this test for a reason and you giving me all the, the, uh, the armor and all the tools I need to achieve victory. Praise God. Thank you very much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff, you want to say something to that? Yeah, I'll talk about my testimony. Uh, it's similar to these guys. Uh, I uh, went to the University of Texas, was an All-American my senior year. Um, I was number three in the country in sacks, so I was excited. I was like, oh, I'm going to get drafted. I'm going to uh, be a first-round pick. I was excited to get drafted. So when the draft came around, I'm waiting on my name to get called. First round goes by. I'm like, all right, that's all right. I'll I'll be called in the next two rounds. Second round goes by. I'm like, okay, third round's coming up. I'm good. I'm good. Third round goes by. 
I start getting a little worried. Then fourth round goes by. My dad and mom are sitting there like, well, you're, the fifth round, you will get drafted. There's no way you won't. Fifth round goes by, sixth round goes by. I get calls in the seventh round thinking I'm, gonna get, I'm getting drafted. Teams are telling, well, if you don't get drafted, well, uh, we want you to come sign with us. And I mean, at this time, I'm kind of like, well, how did I get here? I, w I was an All-American. I was supposed to be this. I was supposed to be this. I was supposed to be first round, supposed to be drafted all high. Ended up going undrafted, uh, which I was, I, I won't lie, I was depressed. I didn't know what to do. I was, uh, I was, I was so ha happy with my performance, happy with what I did, feeling like I was this and I was that, and I deserved this and I deserved that. And so I, uh, but I don't, I did it. Um, so I went to the C Seattle, the Seahawks, as an undrafted free agent, and uh, was there for three months, played there in the preseason, uh, played well. They put me at one position, they moved me when training camp happened, and um, I couldn't get the position down, I ended up getting cut. Uh, so that also added to my frustration of not getting drafted, then everybody thinking that I'm going to make this team with ease and then not making the team, I got cut. Uh, by this time, I'm thinking, like, why, Lord? What, what's going on? Why, why is this happening to me? And I didn't know. And so I go home uh, to my parents' house in Colorado. And all throughout this, this time of three months, I kept seeing um, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, talking about the the full armor of God, putting that on. And at the time, I didn't know why I kept seeing it. I kept, I asked, my, I asked a bunch of people, and they were, they were telling, I mean, I knew what the verse was or what it was saying, and, but I didn't know what I was, I was preparing for, what battle I was preparing for. And um, I sat down and talked to my mom, and she was telling me, baby, I, I think the reason why you keep seeing this verse is because it's, because there's a spiritual war going on there, on outside of you. You can't see it, but it's going on, and they're gonna. People are. The devil is gonna try to attack God's warriors, and you being a warrior for Christ, things are gonna happen to you, but you would never lose. You you might fall, but you will get up again. Yeah. And so that was the biggest thing going on for me. So I I got called within a week and a half to go to play for the Redskins, and. I'm excited. I'm excited to go out there. I go out there, play well. Uh, it was a, the situation wasn't ideal, but I made the best out of it. And I thought to myself, nothing can be worse than what happened before. And I'm not going to let anything get me down like it did before. So even though I went there, played well, I ended up getting injured, hurting my back. Uh, so I missed half the season, come back, think I'm going to come back and play with the Redskins. Um, and sorry if you guys couldn't hear me. But um, I come back, and they ended up cutting me. So I'm like, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? So the, the Cleveland Browns picked me up like within a couple hours. I go there. I'm like, well, new beginning. I'm going to do my thing here. And end up, we get to training camp, and I end up pulling my hamstring. And so I, I, at, the, at that moment, I wanted to go back into that state I was before where I was depressed, where I was like, why, what's going on? But I, I, I flipped it and was like, no, I trust you. I trust you what's going to happen. I trust that th there's a reason for this going on. There's a reason. And I mean, it, it was hard because I went a whole year without, I, a whole season without playing. And then my agent called me and told me that the Blue Bombers wanted to sign me, wanted me to come up here. And at the time, I didn't know much about the CFL. So I was like, well, I want to keep seeing what's going on with the NFL. And uh, so I started watching on YouTube, watching games, and I was like, oh, it looks like a fun league. It looks like they have some fun and good talent out here. And so I get that. I, I tell my agent, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to go up there, sign with them. So I sign with the Blue Bombers, and here I am today, enjoying it, playing, starting. It's, it's been a blessing. Wow. It's a blessing. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing. I, I, I copied from everything that each one of you has said. It's so amazing, like you. One thing, Jeff, from your own testimony, here you are today, enjoying where you are right now. But from all the story you've said, that scripture, Ephesians chapter six, keep coming. It's a warfare. The one thing that, I'm, that touched me is that 
but you get drafted, you get injured. You'll be in, you'll be, you are the Redskin, get injured. Cleveland, get injured. But you never give up. That's the story of life. Even if you are down, you are not out. Just bounce back again. And here you are at Next Gen Worship Center. We having a fun with you. Drake, if you, were, if you had gone the way it was going, you wouldn't have met lovely Reese to have gotten married to her. True. But God just said, you know what? You can either build a career and miss it. In, and a lot of people are just interested in building careers and not knowing that family is the first. When you miss it in the place of home, you've missed everything. No matter what you build, <laughs> you're not going to enjoy it. And so sometimes it didn't come your way, but God has a better plan. And you are not playing. Then you started going to church. And you saw her at Bible studies and in church. Uh, she's now in Next Gen School of Ministry, the Next Gen Academy. She's training to become a pastor, a preacher, and what have you. Uh, and you, you, here you are. And my friend, Kevin, you, it was hurtful. But look at the testimonies of these two young people beside you. You were able to pull it through. And now you're in next gen. The same way Drake saw while he kept coming to church could be the same way too that you will see. You understand what I'm talking about? I just, I just have to put that in there. Yeah, I know if you know me, you know I have to push that in there. I have to push that in there. I'm going to round up. I have just, I will take three questions and then we'll round up. But how many of you have enjoyed this so far? How many of you have enjoyed this so far? How do you handle teammates that are negative to your faith? Like if they know you are a Christian, how do you handle that? How do you handle teammates if they know the, the same way we uh, deal with the enemy, just have no tolerance from it. I mean, of course you're going to hear negative thoughts that come, and of course you may just hear negative things, but, you know, the Lord give us free will, so you just got to choose to separate yourself from that, um, that negative energy. So just separating, separating yourself from that and not just agreeing, you know what I mean, uh, if it's, a, if it's a conversation, when they say you grin, you in, be bold and don't grin. Be bold and don't agree because the Father wouldn't want us to do the same thing. That's true. That's true. Thank you. Thank you. Let me ask the next question. Somebody says, what is your work week like? I mean, your sleep time, get up time. What is your day-to-day -day routine like? I think this guy wants to join the football. Uh, so he wants to know how many hours of sleep do you get. And uh, do you, what, your workout time? Any, any one of you can answer this. We actually get a lot of time. Um, we will start at nine each day. Um, sometimes we'll have meetings or so before, um, as like a as a position group, and then we'll go at least to like one thirty. Um, then we have the rest of the day to to to, to utilize it and, and do whatever we want. Um, some people choose to work out sometimes before we, we come into meetings or afterwards. Or um, sometimes we'll have our own position meetings, um, outings, or whatever it may be. And but we just always just try to um, include each other. Um, for me, I, I like my downtime. Um, I like to relax and, and, and just get away sometimes because uh, I don't want to be consumed in it. Um, sometimes we get so consumed in our workplace and in our lives that we don't have time for ourselves and our time with God and stuff. And um, a big thing for me is I love listening to worship music, um, just to keep myself peaceful, to keep myself grounded and, and keep myself calm because being in the midst of all these guys, you know, everybody wants to be the alpha dog. Everybody wants to be that guy, like I said earlier. <laughs> And everybody's trying to prove themselves, and I get tired of that. I get tired of that. <laughs> um, so I just like to just have my own time, just to get away from it, and just um, just chill and worship and stuff. Praise God! Thank you for sharing. Anyone of you want to answer that? Yeah. Well, uh, I can just talk about the uh, college schedule, how it was in college. Okay. It's a uh, we. <laughs> it was a grind. 
But uh, you would have early morning workouts. Some of us had like 6 a.m.s. You had to be up at 6 a.m. to go work out. Then uh, right after that workout, guys would have like 8 o'clock class. So you would have to hustle, take a shower, uh, and run the class. And I know for sure being in, in Austin, Texas, and him being in New Orleans, you started sweating again right when you got back outside because it's real humid. So you walk the class, um, have classes for either an hour or two hours, and then you'd either get to have lunch, then you have to go to another set of classes, uh, either back to back or just another one. And then after that, you got to hustle over to the facility. We have, you would have uh, meetings for about two hours and then we go out to the practice field and then you have practice for two and a half to three hours and then uh, when I was a freshman in college after practice we had mandatory study hall so you get your dinner had to hustle back up to our study hall where we would have to uh, work on our schoolwork and we'd be up there we start at 6 a.m. and get done at 9 p.m. Wow. so long days and yeah, college was a, it was a grind. You didn't have a much of a social life during that time. So your, your rewind, or yeah, your, your relaxed time, unwind time was it from nine to 10 when you, when you finished up your day and you'd sit there and I know guys would just, just melt into their bed, just sit there. Some would just go to sleep right when you got into your bed because you had to get up and do it all over again. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. Anyway, let me ask the last question, and all of you will answer this, um, and then I'll give you the last word to say whatever you want to say. How do you stay humble despite the fame and the applause and the accolades that you receive wherever you go? How do you stay humble? Um, I think for me, um, <clears throat> I've always been the underdog. I've always been the one that was told I wasn't going to do this and I wasn't going to do that, and I've always exceeded those expectations of people. Um, and I've got to a place to where whatever I get, whatever accomplishments, whatever it is, I have to give it unto the Lord only because he's the only reason why I am here today. Um, and I, I take pride in that and I make that known to my teammates and the people around me only because uh, I've had to work for each and every single thing that I, I've been given. Um, and, and sometimes in life and in this generation, we are just expected that we we deserve this and we deserve that and um, we were we we uh, I forget the word I was going to use but um, sometimes we we just get in a place in our minds to where we just want this and want that and when we don't get it we have this pity party um, and we we don't work to truly get to where we want to be and we just expect oh well this person had this this person did that so I'm going to receive the same exact treatment that that person did. And, and, and so I've learned just to appreciate um, all that I've given and been received um, only because of the journey that God has taken me on and I'm very appreciative of it. So it keeps me humble and it keeps me to be the, the man of God I am today. Praise God. Thank you for sharing. Um, for me, uh, it's been, it's up and down sometimes. Sometimes I get to, I do something for, myse for myself, I say. Uh, I do something and I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I did that. I, I made that happen. And then automatically I got to think, I got to think to myself, no, that wasn't me. Uh, that was God. That was God there looking for me. And without him, I wouldn't be able to do anything. Um, there was a, there's a lot of times where I just felt like I would get prideful and either my parents would humble me or God would humble me. I, something would happen where I was like, yeah, you're right. You're right, Lord. Yeah, I need to get it together. <laughs> Sit down and be humble. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep, yep. So that's, um, that, <laughs> uh, that's, that's how I stay humble, remembering the times that, um, that I either had to, had to be humbled or realize that it's not me that did it, it was him. And uh, I can, anything that I've done can be taken away like that. That's Thank me. you for sharing that. Rick? Um, just being thankful. And as, I, as, as, as years go by, as the days go by, I realize that if, if uh, I just keep working on taking self out of the equation, 
it'll go a lot smoother. So I just try to be more God's will than self-will and not look at the things with the natural eyes, try to look at it with my spiritual eye and just every day just try to humble myself. And uh, as we humble ourselves, the Lord, he, he'll exalt you. That's right. Ooh. I've done, I've conducted, I think, about six, close to six interviews this month, or maybe, maybe four, I think close to. But your interview brought tears to my eyes. Thank you very much. I, I feel, for me, I feel the reason why that happened is because you were, you were very honest with us. You let us into your heart, and people watching online and um, people here, this is a takeaway. And for us, it's just appreciating what God is using your story, your journey. Because somebody is going to make reference to today, to something you just said. Because it's one thing, I can come as a pastor and I'll be preaching. You say, Pastor, you're just talking because you're a pastor. But when you come share your faith, you come let us know how you're able to succeed where you are, how you're able to handle failures, how you've been able to handle the voices in the inside of you, how you've been able to handle when you are down, how you've been able to handle disappointment, how you've even been able to handle when you succeed, the wins, and just your journey. It's really amazing. Thank you very much. Next year, what do we say one more time? I'm going to give you a closing thought. I'm going to give you a closing thought. I know we are way out of our time, but I think, is it worth it, guys? Yeah. One minute closing thought. Anything you want to say. Anything you want to say. And all of you, yes. And then we'll take our tithes and our offering, and we share the grace. Please, those of you that are in my prayer pick-up time, you know, we have, we have a, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, please, closing thought. Um... I, I encourage everyone to know know the legal know your legal rights in Christ. Uh, many many promises in the Bible, the the Father written for us, and is to, is at our access. But we also have to do our work to know what's what's available for us. So just take advantage of our legal rights in Christ and know and understand the promises that He's already written for us. And we walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you. Um, I would say along the journey, um, for one, you have to stay encouraged, but you have to have a, a good circle of people around you. Um, you have to have your family or whatever, whoever you consider close and you can talk to about anything because... Um, I said it earlier, it's already hard going through life alone. Um, sometimes... Um, it's not going to be something that you want to do or that you want to go through, but at the same time, when you can lean on brothers or, or, or sisters in Christ, it just makes it that much easier just to go through the process, um, to know that what you go through isn't just for you. Yeah. What you go through is something that you're going to be able to tell people and help people just to get through whatever it is that they may be going through, and it may be for somebody that you don't even know. Um, so that's why we are, are encouraged to give our testimony and, and, and just spread the love uh, of Jesus Christ all around. So I just pray that we all continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to talk to you guys, just uh, tell you about positive thought, positive words. Keep being positive. I've learned from these two brothers here that, that that's huge. I mean, I, Drake is right next to me in the locker room, and there'll be times when I come in the in from practice, and I'm like, whew, man, I'm, and he'll be like, uh, uh-uh, nah, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm great, I feel great, I feel great, That's, because he, 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 he's, he, he'll sit there and talk to me about how those positive words will, will affect you, it'll make you start thinking in a more positive light, when you start saying negative things, you don't realize it, but you start reacting to things more negatively, so be positive, Turn everything you can into a positive outlook. Look at it as, and look at the positives, even in your negative situations, because sometimes you might be down, but you're never out with the Lord.
Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's appreciate them one more time.